Good evening and welcome to Primetime News. It's Tuesday, April 18th. I'm Salima Shumwe Felini Masipa. Thank you for tuning in. In our top story this evening, the Namibia Financial Assistance Fund has announced a significant change in its policy regarding non-tuition fees for students who received loans. During a media briefing earlier today, Kennedy Kandume, the acting chief executive officer of the institution, revealed that starting from end of this month, students will receive monthly payments for their non-tuition fees. Let's listen in to Kandume's statement. The fund would like to, to announce that we will commence with monthly payment for non-tuition fee this year. What has been happening for a way of... Um, of uh, in the know of our operation is that we pay twice or so a year like the amount that is message for non tuition fees divided twice or sometimes three times and then we pay meaning that student receive uh, lump sum this is that is going to change this year this year students uh, are going to receive non tuition fee on the monthly basis um, instead of quarterly or sometimes two times uh, per year. The amount we will work out, out and divide it with the remaining month so that we arrive at the monthly payment to be dispersed to, to student. So this, in this regard, the fund invested to start with a monthly payment to continuing student at the end month, that's now April, provided that their respective institution of higher learning have submitted the invoice. There's that lack in the process of um, displacement of funds. And that's the process of us receiving the invoice from the institution of higher learning. I think you must be asking yourself, why do we have to rely on the invoice in the, in the institution of higher learning to provide us with the uh, invoice? One, is because we need to, to know whether a particular student has passed and progressed. That information we will not know. It's only the institution that to know who has passed and progressed. Also serve as a condition that a particular student has passed and is progressing to the next academic year. Cinered has released information regarding the recent power outage in Okahanja. According to Cinered Public Relations Officer Charlie Matengu, the power failure was caused by a faulty major transformer in the town. More on this developing story. Cinered Public Relations Officer Charlie Matengu in an interview with Nampa said, the power failure affected the entire town, all households, businesses, schools, farmers and tourism accommodation facilities. Matengo explained that the power outage was noticed by Senored at around 12 on Sunday. On her part, Nam Power Corporate Communications Officer Rosa Nekanor said teams of Nam Power technicians were on site trying to investigate and identify the exact technical faults on the transformer. In our next story, we turn to the upcoming Kietmanswap rural constituency by election. The Electoral Commission of Namibia has announced its readiness for the polls, which are scheduled to take place on May 15, 2023. Our reporter Linnea Dishena compiled the following report. Chief Electoral and Referenda Officer of the ECN, Theo Muyoro, made the announcement in a media statement that said, The ECN conducted the supplemental registrations of voters in the constituency from 7th to 10th March 2023 and that the final voters' register will be made available on 26 April 2023. More than 6,675 eligible voters in the Kate Mansour rural constituency are expected to cast their ballots on 15 May. Candidates who will contest the by-elections are Johannes Ayman of the Popular Democratic Movement, Elias Karuhab of the Swapo Party, Velem Laboskakni for the LPM, Magdalena van Staden of the Independent Patriots for Change, and Garrett Vedboy as an independent candidate. ECN will deploy election officials a day prior to the election date. Our next story highlights a significant political development in South Africa. On Monday, President Cyril Ramaphosa signed into law a new legislation that allows independent candidates to run in national elections without needing to be associated with a political party. 
This decision is seen as a political game changer for the country's political landscape, especially as opinion polls suggest that the ruling African National Congress may not secure a majority in next year's nationwide vote after almost three decades in power. Here's more updates on this story. Under the current system, voters in legislative elections cast ballots for political parties and the 400 seats in the National Assembly are allocated to each party under a system of proportional representation. Each party then distributes its shares of seats among elected party members, a system that critics says promotes loyalty and patronage over commitment to a constituency. The new law gives a space for independent candidates along regional lines, stipulating that that in regions where individuals are contesting elections, ballot papers must include their names alongside political parties. The new law now provides for the inclusion and nomination of independent candidates as contestors to elections. Stay tuned for the business segment. Welcome to Primetime Biz, the segment where we provide you with comprehensive coverage and analysis of the latest news and trends in the world of business and economics. In our top business story, we turn to the Namibia Investment Promotion and Development Board and the World Bank Group who have recently concluded the Chelete Cage Pitch Event. The aim of the event was to tackle the issue of access to finance that is often faced by startups, micro, small and medium enterprises in Namibia. Our reporter Patricia Kutsia compiled this report. In a statement issued by NIPDB on Monday, Senior Marketing, Branding and Communications Manager Catherine Shipushu said the Chileta Cage Pitching event took place in Vinduk and focused on providing a crucial platform for innovative startups and MSMEs to raise funds and meet their capital needs. The Chileta Cage offered eight Namibian MSMEs with investment readiness the chance to pitch their business plans for capital amounts of 30,000, 20,000 and 10,000 Namibian dollars. Those businesses fall in the food processing, cosmetics, manufacturing, tech, as well as logistics sectors. Additionally, the selected MSMEs had access to non-financial assistance such as advice on how to contact potential investors as well as pointers on perfecting their pitch. Shipushu said the pitching MSMEs were selected from the No to Grow High Potential Pool, a specialized program designed by NIPDB to assist MSMEs with high potential in order to export their products. Reporting for Primetime News, I'm Michael Madimba. We turn now to a cautionary story. The Government Institutions Pension Fund has issued a warning to the public about scammers who are targeting its members and soliciting personal financial information to gain access to their funds. According to a press release issued on Monday, the scammer's goal is to obtain members' personal information and use it to access their money. It is important to remain vigilant and take necessary precautions to protect yourself from such fraudulent activities. Stay tuned for more information on this developing story. In a press release issued on Monday, GIPF stated that the goal is to obtain members' personal information in order to access their money. 
It said the fund will never call and ask for personal information from its members and that it does not compel its members to pay for any of the services or benefits that it provides as a fund. The fund advised its members to never divulge their GIPF information to anyone who contact them, saying it will always request tangible papers from its members if needed. The statement further said members should never disclose their one-time PIN to anyone when transacting or utilizing facilities such as e-wallet, blue wallet or easy wallet and if they receive a call from someone claiming to be from the fund, they should call the GIPF officers for confirmation. We have come to the end of our top news segment for tonight. Up next we have the economics roundup. Following that we'll have a detailed weather forecast to keep you informed about the conditions in your area. Welcome to Sport Planet. In our sports segment tonight, we have an inspiring story of triumph and dedication. 
Chenault Lionel Kutsia, the 25-year-old athlete based in Erongo, has broken the national long jump record at the Athletics Namibia National Championships. Kutsia jumped an impressive 8.27 meters, making him the new national record holder and champion. The previous record of 8.24 meters was set by Stefan Lowe over a decade ago in Johannesburg, South Africa. In an interview, Kutsia expressed his determination to continue working hard and achieving his dream of representing Namibia at a higher level. We now bring you the latest on Chelsea's preparations for the upcoming Champions League clash against Real Madrid. The team's owner, Todd Bowley, reportedly spoke to the players in the dressing room after their recent loss to Brighton, calling the season embarrassing in an effort to motivate them for the important match. Chelsea, currently 11th in the Premier League table, has lost all three matches since Frank Lampard returned to Stamford Bridge as caretaker boss. Despite the team's struggles, Lampard has defended Bowley's passion and commitment to the club. Our sports roundup is up next. And with that, we've reached the end of this Tuesday night's broadcast. Thank you for watching. From myself, Salima Shimwe Feleni Masipa, and the entire production team, it's good night.